In the last lecture, we have seen the introduction of Turing machine and in this lecture, we come to the second part of the introduction where we will see some more important things that we need to know about the basics of Turing machine. Alright, so here I have a diagram which represents or shows how a Turing machine actually looks like. So here I have a control portion and then here we have the tape about which we have already discussed in the last lecture. So let us see what is this control portion. The control portion is similar to the finite state machines or a push down automata. So this control portion or the program, this is the main controlling portion of the Turing machine which takes care of how the control has to be handled in a Turing machine. So we say that this is similar to our finite state machines or push down automata. So remember that this is not actually a finite state machine or a push down automata, but it is something similar to that because this is the portion that is controlling your Turing machine. So this is the program or the control portion of your Turing machine. And one thing you need to remember is that it is deterministic. We already know what is the meaning of determinism and non-determinism. We have already studied in this lecture series and remember that this is a deterministic and why it is deterministic we will discuss later as we proceed further in this module and we will show that non-determinism does not buy you any additional power in case of Turing machine so it is deterministic so as we were saying this is the control portion and then this portion it is the tape the tape is another important part of the Turing machine and as we already discussed in the previous lecture, the tape consists of a tape head which represents the current position of the control and then we have the input strings which are filled into these cells and then we have the empty cells which are filled in by these symbols known as the blank symbols. And why do we do this? We do this because our tape is an infinite sequence. So the empty cells, we don't want to leave them blank. Instead of that, we fill them with a special symbol known as the blank symbols which goes out to infinity. Now we will discuss some of the rules of operations. We have two sets of rules of operation. So this is set number one. And it says that at each step of the computation, what we have to do? We can read the current symbol and then we can update or write in the same cell and you can move exactly one cell either to the left or to the right. So in the previous lecture we already discussed what are the operations that you can perform on a tape and at each step of the computation you have to look where your tape head is present and that is the current symbol that we consider and you can read that current symbol and then you can update that means you can write in the same cell and what is the same cell? The same cell is the cell or the symbol on which your tape head is currently present. So you can read that symbol and then on the same cell where you read, you can update or write into that same cell. And then you can move exactly one cell either to the left or to your right. You can move either to your left or right, but only one step, not more than one step. And then one more rule that you should remember is that if we are at the left end of the tape and trying to move left, then do not move. Stay at the left end. So if you are having the tape and your tape head is on the leftmost end of the tape and if you are trying to move to the left, then you know that there is no place to move to the left because that is the leftmost end. So if you are in that kind of a situation, then you should not move. You have to just stay at the left end of the tape. Now here we have the diagram which represents the transition diagram of a Turing machine. So we have the circles representing the states and we have a transition over here with some symbols and let us see what these symbols mean. So it says A and then we have an arrow and B and we have R over here. So the leftmost symbol over here which is represented by this A, it represents the symbol that you need to read. So remember that you are going to take this transition only if your tape head is on this symbol A. So A is the symbol that you are going to read 
and then the symbol that follows the arrow which is B that represents the symbol that you need to write so your tape head was present on the cell which was containing A and you want to update that A with B that means on that same cell you want to write B so the symbol you want to write is represented by this B over here and then what is the next step that we need to do we already said we have to move one step either to the left or to the right so this symbol over here it gives you the direction to move the direction to move either to the left or to the right so if you have an R over here it means move to the right and if you have an L over here it means move to the left so that is the meaning of the symbols in this transition diagram now there is one case that is if you do not want to update the cell then what do you do so let's assume that our tape head is on one symbol and you are reading that symbol and you have to update the same cell now what if you don't want to update you want to leave that cell as it is then what you have to do you have to just write the same symbol again so if you don't want to update any symbol on a particular cell on which your tape head is present then you have to just write the same symbol onto that cell so this represents that situation this circles represents the state and you see that your tape head is on the symbol 1 and this is the symbol you are going to read so since you don't want to update the cell what you do is you just write the same symbol onto that cell again so you have one here and you have one here also because you are writing the same thing to that same cell and then we have L over here which says that you have to move to the left so those were the first set of rules of operation that you can perform now let us go to the second set of rules of operation now coming to the second sets of rules of operation the first point says the control is with a sort of finite state machine so this was the first thing that I showed you when we started this lecture with the diagram so as I told you the control or the program is with some sort of finite state machine it may not exactly be a finite state machine but it is something similar to a finite state machine or a PDA and then we have our initial state as usual and then coming to the final states we need to know that there are exactly two final states in a Turing machine and what are they the one is the accept state and then the other one is a reject state so there are two final states and the first one is an accept state that is if something is accepted or if a string is accepted then Turing machine goes into the accept state and in case a string is rejected or if something is rejected or is not accepted then the Turing machine will go to the reject state which is another kind of a final state so these are the two kind of final states that we have in our Turing machine and then another thing that we need to know is that when does the computation of a Turing machine halt? Halt means when does it come to a stop? So the computation can either halt and accept. That means when you reach an accepting state, when the string is accepted, that time the machine comes to a halt or that time the machine stops. And then the second case is that it halts and rejects. That means when a string is not accepted, and when it comes to a reject state then also the machine holds so coming to a reject state also the machine stops its computation and then there is a special case that is case number three which we call loop that means the machine fails to hold so the first two cases are clear it comes to an accept state or it comes to a reject state on a particular input and in some inputs the machine could go into a loop that means the machine keeps on computation and it never comes to an accept state neither does it come to a reject state it keeps on computation and it fails to stop so that condition is known as loop so in loop the machine fails to hold so these are the conditions that we can get when we do computation in our Turing machine so these are the important things that you need to remember about the basics of Turing machine and as we go further we will see how it works and also we will see examples of how it works so thank you for watching this and see you in the next one